Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm working on my super mini bonsai. Most of these tiny trees were developed for that miniature bonsai bench that I displayed at the Toronto Bonsai Society's spring show. Here is a look at what the bench looks like today. So the moss with the stones here looks really, really good. I'm, uh, that looks better than when I had it on display in Toronto. I've got a lot of weeds that have grown up to each side of the bench and I think that looks more realistic. It looks a lot more like my uh, bonsai area, that's for sure. The original flowers I planted back here are alive, but they've, well, they're not as nice looking as they were in spring. They've kind of died back in a lot of places. Yeah, so that's what the uh, miniature bench looked like. And then I had all my little mini bonsais on display on the bench, creating kind of a realistic, well, a penging or diorama. I've got all these mini bonsais in a tray of damp sand and the roots grow from the little pots down into the tray of sand and that keeps them hydrated over the summer so they don't dry out in one or two hours. It keeps them hydrated for the whole day. It's a lot easier to take care of them. You don't have to water the individual pots. You can just kind of water above getting them kind of moist and then the tray of sand fills up with water and the trees seem really, really happy. So today I'm going to be pruning them all up. Believe it or not, they, they grow just like any other tree, even though they're in a small, small pot. I'll be taking the trees out of the tray and working on them one at a time. So here I go. I'm going to start with this jade out front. You can feel, see how firm the pot is in the tray of sand? So the roots have grown through the drainage holes into the sand. So let me get it out of the sand here. Okay, here it comes. So you can see there's a mat of roots on the bottom here. So I'll have to trim those away and then put it back in the sand when I'm done pruning the top of the tree. I'll start by pruning away the roots on the bottom of the pot. So you can see there's the mat of roots that was growing in the sand. And I also want to make sure my drainage hole is clear that it's not clogged up. This is one of Isabella's pots. Really nice pot. Tiny trees require tiny turntables. So Tom from the YouTube channel Grow and Clip Bonsai for Seniors sent me these little turntables and they're perfect for working on small trees. My little mini jade here is a cutting off my larger one here. So you can see, you know, the trunks get woody and they thicken up. They make a nice succulent bonsai. It's time to prune up the jade. I notice there's a bit of grass growing here. So I'll pull up my weeds as my first task. There's another <laughs> rather large weed growing up here. Wow, I didn't notice that, that's huge. I think that's also grass. Okay, so on this tree I have a main trunk here and then there's, it looks like sort of a back branch. So I need to clip my moss, get it back down to a, a better height. It's getting kind of high in the pot here. So that's what I'll start off with is just pruning my moss back. And even though I'm pruning it back to just, you know, well, basically brown moss, it will come back. Well, at least I hope it comes back. It usually does. All the moss spores are in there and it regrows and turns green quickly once again. But it's important to get the height of the moss down, otherwise it just doesn't look to scale in miniature. And you know, if it doesn't green up again and you have a show coming up, you can always just get some new thin moss and put it on. It's not like you're after a large quantity of moss. It's just a, a tiny little patch.
should be quite easy to find. Okay, so that's got the moss pruned back. Now, which is the front? I guess this is the front, and I have this as a back branch. So let's prune up the back branch first. I don't want the back branch to compete with the main trunk line, so it'll be a smaller branch. So I will prune off this one right here. And this one, I'll go back to here, keeping it very, very tiny. So that's got that back part pruned up. So now let's go to the front here. So I can prune this back to here, like that, this one to here. Always keeping some of the new growth on. And this one, I'll go back to here. And maybe my final cut, um, there is a bud way back there. I think I'll utilize that, so I'm going to prune it way back here. Okay, so now I need to have a look at it. Look at the structure of the tree. There's a few dead leaves that, have, that are in here that I need to clean out. I'll get rid of this leaf hanging off the bottom there. So I've got a back branch, I've got a side branch, an apex that divides. I think I have to prune this side branch. There's a few little shoots here. I can prune this back further, so I will. So I'm going to prune it right here. It was getting a little long. Yeah, I think the rest of it's fine. I'll just take out this leaf here so you can see the trunk line a little more and this one here. It's just a little leaf thinning. Oh, I took the wrong end of that leaf off there. And maybe there's some large leaves from when I initially planted it that I'll take out because all the new leaves will come in quite small. Like that. So now you can see it has, well, I'll get rid of this one too. So now you can see it has a much more miniature appearance. It looks like a, a tiny tree. So that one can go back in its sandbox. Here is a new addition to my mini bonsai collection. This pot was given to me by Mr. Boxwood and it's a golem jade that's growing in it and it was started from a leaf cutting. I just stuck a leaf in the pot, it rooted and then started growing these little uh, I guess it's sort of like a clump style jade. So it's in the very early beginnings. It's very, very tiny. You can see my finger compared to it. Yeah, so that'll be uh, a fun little project to grow a jade from a leaf cutting. I have another one that's grown from a leaf cutting. I'll get that out next. Here's a look at my other jade that was started from a leaf cutting. This is one of the uh, cuttings off of Connor's jade. So it's a fairly small leaf variety, but it's, it's also a very small tree or bonsai. So I'm going to prune this up. Um, I think this is the first time it's ever been pruned. So I need to pick a style. I've got already a twin trunk. So one going to the left and one to the right. So I think this is the logical front because everything's coming towards you. So I need to pick one as my kind of dominant trunk and the other as a smaller trunk to create some variety. You don't want your two, your twin trunk bonsai to be, you know, have both trunks the same height. So on this one, I'm going to go prune it back to here. So that'll be my taller trunk. And the other one, I'm going to go back to here, 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 it's hard to get in here, come on, oh 
there's a leaf behind it, no wonder. There. Okay, so I think that's it for the first pruning. You can see, well, it'll subdivide here and it'll subdivide here. I probably should remove this leaf that's going across the center like that. Give a little more light. Yeah, I, I think that'll do. I, I think it looks quite nice. Next, I have a group of cuttings. These were the leftover cuttings when I pruned my other jade and I planted them all in a pot, sort of a, well, I guess a clump style. So I'm going to prune them back today, kind of shortening them all, getting some more subdividing so it gets a bit of a, eh, more of a miniature look and a canopy on them. So here I go. Let's just, and I think, I think the trees in the middle will be the highest and tallest, and then I'll, I'll kind of make it, well, I guess a triangular shape, the overall silhouette. So maybe I should start by pruning my center trees wherever they are. You can see there's aerial roots coming off these. A lot of succulents grow aerial roots if they're growing in a humid environment like the greenhouse here. And I don't water them much. It's just, yeah, I guess they're looking for moisture in the humid air and they just grow aerial roots. Okay, so this this one's in the middle and it's this height. I'm just going to, I'm going to prune it back quite short to here, taking that top off. And then I don't want to prune them down to bare trunks, so I'll keep some leaves on all of them if I can. So I'll prune this one to here. And they'll, they'll look a little sparse after pruning. But once they start branching and fill in again, they'll look quite nice. I've got to go back to here. So I'm pruning the outside ones now, quite short. I'll go to here. Oh, it's still quite tall. I'm using directional pruning. I'm trying to prune to leaves that are facing outwards or just above them so all the new growth comes in in a good direction and this one can come right back to here so quite a change for this little pot of plants you can see some of the older leaves here are starting to turn yellow and they'll they'll fall off soon pull them off if you want. Yeah, I think that'll do. I think that's kind of a nice little cluster of plants. Okay, back in the sandbox they go. My next plant I'm pruning up has the longest roots of any of them. So I will prune the roots off first. They were growing really well in the sand and this is a grass planting. And you can see the grass, it's an ornamental grass given to me by David from the Toronto Club. And it's beautiful grass and they get these little, I don't know if you call them flowers, I guess they're flowers. Flowers and they must make seeds. So the moss is looking quite good in this one. I'll show you a close up. There's a close up of the moss. So it looks quite nice. I'm going to try just pruning the grass off short, giving it a, uh, well, I, I guess a profile prune, kind of shortening it. I think I'll use the blue scissors. I came in with the scissors and I refined the shape of the grass, just rounding the top so it didn't look like it was sheared off with the blue scissors. Just kind of trimming it up like that. And I, I think that's good. I think it looks quite nice, like a little planting of grass. I think it's very, very cute. So that's my uh, ornamental grasses. So they can go back in the sandbox too. The next tree I'm going to pull out is the Arizona Cypress and you can see how tall and bushy it's gotten. This is year two from a seed. All right. So it, looks like it's rooted 
really well in here. Um, I think I'm going to pull out a lot of sand, so I think I'll just trim the roots off right here. Here I go. And they're just fine roots. There. There. So now I have it out of the sand. And that can just stay in there. The roots will rot away. Here is a look at my Arizona Cypress. If you don't prune those roots that are going into the sand every now and then, the roots won't fill the container. They'll just go down into the sand instead. So I think this is maybe that case. The tree looks... Well, it's firmly rooted in the pot, but it's not super, super stable. So I'm going to begin by pruning it. Uh, the original height uh, in spring was about here, and I think I want it back to that kind of a height. So I'm going to prune back my leaders, get my close-up glasses on for this. Um, I think this is the front of the planting, either there or this side. I think this side's a better front. So I'm looking for growth my first branch is up here and it's too high, so I'm going to prune it right back to some needles here. Like that, taking the whole top off the tree. I'll do the same for all these other three branches at the apex. Pruning between the needles. Now this one does have a bit of branching down low, so I'll keep that. And then I've got another branch coming out the back here. I'll prune a little higher right here. Like that. So that's got the basic height down. Now I need to prune these extensions back further. They're too long. Because I do want to grow this in a conical shape. So even these ones are too long. <laughs> I can get in here. I do have smaller scissors. Ah, it's like, there we go. I think I had a needle between my scissors there. Like that. The top here is fine. That could be my apex. I have a shoot coming out the side here. Yeah, I pruned halfway between this one needle here. To fix that up a bit. There. And then the rest of this growth is just a matter of pruning it back. To that conical form so I can basically just kind of shear the tree to a conical form like a profile prune. So I want to do it from all angles. So you can see here it's sticking out too far far at the bottom there, too far here, and a little far here. I think that's got it pruned up, maybe a little tighter on this side. I was talking to Jay about asymmetry in conical trees, and yeah, I was out for a walk the other day, and I noticed a conical shaped tree that was asymmetrical. And I think I better show you that. It's uh, something to keep in mind when you're doing a conical tree that they don't have to be symmetrical. So maybe this tree, I can do that. I can keep the growth a little longer on this side and a little shorter on the inside here. Let's go look at that uh, asymmetrical conical tree and then we'll come back and finish pruning this up. Here is a look at a Colorado blue spruce. This one isn't very asymmetrical. It has a bit of asymmetry up top here. I don't know if you can see it. I can't get too close to the house because the people are sitting on their front yard and I don't want to be snooping around with a camera. So this is it from the distance. Here's another tree and you can really see the asymmetry in this tree. One side is very 
very has very small branches and the other side they're quite full. So there's a good example of an asymmetrical tree. Here's looking under the tree to the full side over here and sparser on this side. So an asymmetrical conical tree. Here's a view showing the asymmetry and this is another Colorado blue spruce. It's always nice to get some inspiration from Mother Nature. Now I'll try and apply that asymmetry to my Arizona cypress. All right, asymmetry. So I want to make it tighter on this side. So I'm going to try these smaller scissors. Oh, they don't cut very well. <laughs> it's hard cutting through this little fine foliage. Uh, let's try. Let's try these scissors, see how they cut. Oh, they cut nicely. They're nice and sharp and precision. So I'm making the growth tighter on this side of the tree. And it'll be a little longer on this side. And I'll just see how it develops. So it's almost like a, a conical windblown design. So you can see a bit of asymmetry there. I think I can make it a little tighter. So I'll come in back here. Like that. Get it from all angles here. I think that's got the asymmetry in place. And as this tree matures, I'll be developing a bit of space between some of the branches. Kind of duplicating the look of a, a more mature tree. Eliminating some of my whorls. I could, I could get rid of this branch here, creating a little bit of space here. That helps. And maybe this branch here. Again, creating a little negative space in the design. Maybe just shear this one back a little more. And this one back a little more. Okay, I think that's it. I think the tree's looking quite nice. This little tree, the height of my hand, gives me the same feeling as looking up at that giant Colorado spruce. I gotta prune this back a bit. Yeah, it gives me that same feeling. I'm just going to prune my apex a little more tight. Yeah, I like that. The next tree I'm going to take out of the sandbox here is the one that's in flower, my lantana. Beautiful, beautiful flowers on it. And I can tell the roots are going into the sandbox because look at the size of the leaves. The vigor of it is tremendous. So it must have quite a root system in the sand here. So I might have to kind of lift this up and again, prune the roots, leaving the roots behind in the sand. So here I go. All right, so this is the pot right here. So I will lift that up. Yes, it has quite a root system on it. You can see it's lifting the whole sandbox up with it. Or a tray of sand. So I'll come in here and cut the roots. There. So that's free. Let's have a look at the tree. Here is a look at the lantana. It has more flowers coming here and more developing here. Unfortunately, I'm going to be pruning them off today. I've enjoyed the flowers. They're, they're starting to fade now. You can see they're, the, the individual flowers are falling off the cluster. I'm sure there's a scientific name for all that. but So yes, uh, I'll be pruning all those flower buds off. Just shaping the tree. I mean, once the tree is shaped, I can let it flower. But for now, I'm just trying to build the structure of the tree. So this is in a cascade pot, a tall pot like this. 
So usually in a tall cascade pot, you want your tree to kind of hang down. So it's, yeah, it justifies the tall pot. Otherwise, there's no point having a tall pot if your tree's all growing upright. So I don't really have anything cascading. All the growth is going vertical. So I'll prune it back very short here. Here goes my nice flowers. Bye, flowers. Oh, I notice there's some insects on it, so I'm going to put this outside. It could be white fly, I'm not sure. I haven't seen it. Oh, it is white fly. I haven't seen white fly on any of my other trees in the greenhouse here. Just this one, it must attract them. Okay, so that's the first big cut. I will. Many more to come, I guess. So down here, I have a pair of leaves. I can clip that whole branch off short like that then I've got a vertical shoot here I'll prune it back shortening everything back um, I have prune this one back and I will prune this one back and this one Really shortening everything. Now I'm going to go in. I think I'm going to spray it with soap and water first. I can see there's a little bug there. I'll get rid of this outside and spray it with soap and water and then we'll come in and do the uh, branch selection and final pruning. Here I go with the soap and water. Spray up under the leaves. Make sure I get fully covered with soap and water. I think that's good. And I'll leave that sit for a little bit and then rinse it off. All right, it's time to rinse it off. And I'll just use my spray bottle with rainwater and come in and rinse off all the leaves. Okay, now it's time to do a little pruning. I'm going to remove this leaf so you can see the trunk line. So, there we go. So you can see a bit of the trunk now. Now, I don't know if this is the front or if this is the back. Let me have a look here. I think originally that was the back and that was the back branch. I do not need this branch here. It's hiding the trunk line. So it comes off totally. Like that. So you can see the roots, the trunk. This is like a little apex and then you have your cascade part coming down. Um, I do have a branch that grows from the bottom here but it's not exactly cascading. So I think I'll prune off the ones on top here, like this on an angle, here I go, like that. I'll keep that one growing down and I need to simplify this area. It's very complicated. And I still have some soap in there that I need to rinse out. Like that. This could be brought back, this one coming out here. So I'll take that tip off there. In fact, I think that whole branch could come off. Like that. And this part of it here. Like that. Well, it cleans up the trunk line a bit. I think this one is too long. It needs to be brought back further. Like that. And I have a long branch of the side here that can be pruned back also. I think that's got the pruning done. I could do a little more 
leaf pruning just so you can see the structure a bit so it opens it up a little more. Just getting rid of some of the leaves that aren't going a good direction, cleaning it out a bit. This one can come off. There's a big one out the back here that can come off too. This upper one can come off. Getting a little more light to my lower branches. Like that, and this one can come off. Okay, so you can see the trunk's on an angle and then it goes absolutely horizontal. It's not very good looking. I think I have a branch here that's cascading. I think I've got to take this back further. If this tree's to have any future. So here I go. I'm taking the whole end off here. Like that. And then I've got this branch to develop as my cascading part. It's in better proportions now. I think it looks quite nice actually. There's a close-up shot of the tree now. Yeah, I think it's made some progress today. All right, the next tree I think will be this jade here. Then the Portulacaria aphras. I've got a couple of those. And, I th and there's another jade back here. And then I think I'll finish off with my dwarf Hinoki cypress here, the giant redwood style one. Here's a look at my taller jade planted in the blue pot. Quite a nice looking tree. It's starting to get a branch structure. So I will begin pruning it up. So I have this lower branch that I want to bring up into the canopy. I don't think I'm going to touch that. I've got a little leaf here I can take off. I want to prune the canopy back though, so I'm looking for leaves that fan outwards. So I think here, rotate it around, I'm looking for something fanning outwards here, I'll go here. Rotating around, I have this leaf here or way up here. I'm going to... It's going to have to be here. Too high up that other one. And then here, I've got, I can come out the back, so I'll put it there. Now, I'm wondering about this one. Oh, that's okay. And then I think I'll, this is sort of the height of my canopy, so I'll just take the tip off here like this. Like that, I'll get some subdividing and that'll help form my canopy of my tree. Another old leaf here I can remove. Yeah, so I've got a bit of a leaf or a, uh, a scar here from pruning the leader back, but you know, it's not looking bad from this view. There's another yellow leaf in here I can get rid of. Like that. Yeah, so that's pruned up. Hopefully, you know, I'll start to get a canopy on top. Keep working on it for the future. Next up, I have my Thuja occidentalis seedling. So I'll just prune the roots off the bottom here. Like that. So this little tree is less than a year old. It germinated this spring. So it's, a, it's going on maybe, I don't know, five months old. So it's ready for its first pruning. Some of these fronds are kind of getting long and vigorous, so I'll prune them back a bit. So here I go. I'm going to prune this up looking down at the tree. So you can see here's the branches. And I can prune these back to here. Like that, taking the whole end off the branch. This one I can prune back to here. And this one right back to here like that and then I can do a little pinching so I can pinch all these long shoots back 
tightening the shape of the tree up. This is kind of the standard way I prune my thujas. Combination of scissor pruning and pinching seems to do the trick quite nicely. So here's the leader coming up. So there, it's pruned to a somewhat conical form. I mean, this tree is so young. Let's have a look at it from the front view. Here's a look at the little eastern white cedar or Thuja occidentalis. Ah, it looks quite nice for a, a very, very young tree. Next is my clump of Portulacaria aphras. You can see there's a lot of roots on the bottom here, so I'll prune those away like that. Get rid of all this. Here's a look at the Portula Cariafra. Now these are the Lilliput variety, the ones with the very tiny, tiny leaves. So this one's the height of three, two of my fingers almost, maybe three, but very, very small. This is a little forest. So I'm going to start pruning it up and I'm just looking for long shoots. Like here's one sticking up here I can prune off. Uh, the one coming out the front here, I could prune that back further. Take the tip off anyway. Here's another one I can prune off shorter. Just a little refinement pruning, making the trees more compact. Not all of them have grown wild. Some are quite I'm going to take this one back to here. Some of them have just grown a little bit and others kind of shot up a bit. I better take this one back even further. This branch, that could be taken back. There's a little leaf growing here. I don't want that. I'm taking that right out. I think it fell off and rooted. This one's getting long out the back. Or if that's the front, I don't know. <laughs> this one's getting a little long out here. Take it back to here. Like that. There's one growing on the inside here I don't want. There's also a branch on the inside here I don't want. I want some trunk on these. I don't want them to look like bushes. There's a leaf that's fallen down here I can get out. Here's another little sucker coming up here. I'll prune off. Take this large leaf off here. This can be pruned back. Take this leaf off. This can be pruned back. Just kind of removing the tips, encouraging more compact growth and getting the branches to divide. Take that leaf off here. Do a little leaf thinning too. Removing some of my larger leaves. This could be taken back here. Which is the front of this forest? That's a good question. I think, I don't know, I think that's supposed to be the back. I think this is supposed to be the front. Ah. I got branches that come straight out towards the viewer. I think I'm going to take that off. I've got one out the back that's I'll keep. That one goes. I'll let you look into the forest a little more. I'll just prune this back a bit, take that leaf off, and shorten this. Now I have a branch on the inside here that's kind of short. It hasn't grown up into the canopy. It's a bit funny looking maybe. 
I don't know. Shorten this one back. And this one back. That's a little more light in. Maybe. Oh, it's okay. Let's take the tip off this one. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's got it pruned up. It's a little, you know, flat across the top here, but, you know, I think once it's more of a rounded shape. Yeah, I'll keep working on it. This is a interesting little forest. And it's very, very tiny. The next trees I'll be working on are actual jades. They're not Portulacaria afra. These are cuttings off of Connor's jade, his giant jade. This forest was given to me by Matt and I pruned it back several times already. And today I'll prune it back even more, trying to keep it compact and miniature looking. So I think this is the front with the largest tree out front here. Or it could be viewed from this way, kind of the two trees to each side, or three trees, and then the one in the middle. I think I prefer the other view as the front, right here. So I'll prune it up like this is the front. So I've got a tall branch here that needs to be reduced. And I'm looking for a leaf that faces the back, so I'm going to take it quite far back, right into here. Taking that whole top off. This one, I like the branches that come out to the sides. I've already pruned it off here and it has a new shoot here, so... But it is getting tall. I am going to prune it off here, even lower than I did before, like that. And then if something develops down here, I could even, I could even, I, I would like to prune this branch shorter, but I can't guarantee what direction these, it, the leaves would come in because I can't tell where the leaves were. Um, so yeah, like I would really like to prune it here. I guess I could take a gamble. I will. Here I go. No sense talking about it. Just do it. Halfway between segments. Print that off. So I like that better as a shorter branch. Now, I could prune the main tree back in a similar fashion, pruning it back a little harder. I think I will. I'm going to take the top off. Like that. So I don't want these to get you to you know grow into big trees. I'll take this one off here. This one off here. This one here. And this one back to here. Like that. So a lot of foliage on this side, so let me leaf prune away this one large leaf here. Like that. And I can prune away some, at least one of the two leaves here, kind of knocking the vigor back just a bit. And I could go even shorter here, and I will. I'm going to take it back one more node. Okay, I'll take this leaf off also. And I think that's good. I think that's got this little jade forest pruned up so it can grow once again. Next up, I have a clump of Portulacaria Afra cuttings. These are the Lilliput ones again, the small leaf Portulacarias. So again, I'll just prune them back, making them compact. Switch glasses once again to my close-ups and Let's begin pruning. So I'm just pruning them back to like the first set of leaves, making them nice and compact. 
That one's got some branching, so I left the branching on. So these will be growing very slowly and eventually they'll get to be, you know, fairly mature looking trees with lots of movement and lots of taper and, you know, good characteristics for miniaturized trees. Um, keep some branching on that one. Now, so I've got some very small ones here. The ones behind are maybe a little tall. I've got to take them back further. That one's okay. I could take this one back a bit more. Now, do I take this one back further? I think I have to. It's kind of straight. Uh, prune away some ramification. Take the tip off this one. This one's getting a little long too. Okay, I think that's got them pruned up pretty nicely. They're compact and miniature once again. Okay, back in the sand tray. I just have one more little tree before I tackle the dwarf Hinoki cypress. This is another little Portulacaria afra lilliput. I don't want this to be a twin trunk, so I'm going to prune this lowest branch off, which is attached to the main tree. I'm just going to grow it as a single trunk, and then I'll prune this large top off back to these leaves way back here like that. Now I have two opposite branches here. I think in this case I should pick the skinniest one. So I'm going to prune the thicker one off. Keeping my branches a little finer. And then I've got a tip I can prune off here. Like that. And that's got that little tree pruned up. Nice little tree. There's a close-up of the little tree. You can see it's it's only two fingers high. Yeah, it's a bit of a stick in the pot at the moment, but eh, someday it'll look like a mature Portulacaria afra. All right, let's get the last tree out of the sandbox. My Dwarf Hinoki Cypress, not a lot of roots growing out the bottom, so I'll trim those off. Like that. I'll clean the pot up, I'll just take it outside and spray the sand off it. Here is a look at the cypress now. So it's styled to look like a giant tree that would be like a California redwood. A tall old mature tree in a forest. You can see all the new growth, how tight it is. Let me show you a close-up of that. There's a close-up of the foliage. You can see how small it is compared to my finger. It's very, very tiny. So it, you have to have close-up glasses on or magnifier glasses or very good eyesight to prune these up. And again, I'm going to prune this to a sort of a conical form trying to get space between my branches and I'll, I'll try and do an asymmetrical conical form for this tree also. So here's that one that's growing vertical so I'll trim that out like that keeping my horizontal branching. Uh, the branch back here doesn't really fan out nicely it goes 90 degrees to the to where the branch should be so I'm pruning that part of it off 
creating a little bit of negative space here in the process, which always looks good. You don't want it to look too bushy, otherwise it doesn't look like a tree. This branch is a little long here, but if I prune it back, I guess I could prune the tip out. This is very precision pruning. There, <laughs> I pruned the tip out, so hopefully something will grow. I'll get a little bit of growth back further on the branch. Um, I need a little separation up here. That helps a bit. Um, this branch here is looking good. I, I could prune off this bit of it like that, keeping my new growth and maybe pruning the upward part of it off like that. <laughs> this is very, very small and miniature. I, I even think just trying to see this branch here is kind of coming 90 degrees to the branch direction. I'm going to prune it off shorter. Like that. That looks better. This branch still bothers me. It's too long. Ah, there is some green back here, but I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to prune it back to there. That looks better. Hopefully it'll continue to grow. They're, they're pretty good at back budding. I was pleasantly surprised the last time I pruned this how how well it grew back in. I'll take some vertical growth off there. I have some vertical growth here I can remove if I can get in there. I'm not sure if this is all going to be in focus either because it's such a small tree. There, that helps. That certainly helps. You can see it's, it's a little dense in this area. So I need to do some more pruning. There's a vertical part here I can take out. Like that. That helps. Gives some negative space in there. That looks much, much better. Uh, here I have a nice hanging branch. I'll take off this part of it. And in here I have a bit of vertical growth I need to remove. Ah, it looks much better. Give some space. You can see the trunk line. Yeah, that's opened it up nicely. There's one growing vertically back here I can remove. I can find where it's attached there. Like that, that looks good. So I think the front of it is getting pruned up quite nicely. There's one branch growing back here I can take out. It's a little thick here. I'm going to reduce this branch off. Like that, that looks good. The lower part of the tree hasn't grown that much. Let me just show you that. So down here on the lower part of the tree, there's not a lot of growth. It's just, you know, the tips are green and that's about it. Here's the vertical part I can remove here. This one's growing upwards here. I can take out some of these vertical shoots and Sorry if the camera goes out of focus. I think my focus plane is very tight. And this branch is kind of going off the radial direction, so I need to prune this side of it away. Like that. Now, it's growing upwards, this branch, but there's not much I can do about that. Hopefully something will grow in on the underside, and it'll sort of weep a bit more. That branch is okay. This one has a bit of vertical growth on it. I'll try and take that back a bit. 
like that. That helps. So I, I think the front of the tree is pruned up quite nicely. I'll just show you an angle from a little higher up. There's a view kind of looking sort of down at the tree a bit. So I, I think it's looking quite mature. Now the back needs some work. It's a little full out the back here. So let's work on the back now. All right, so here's the back now. So I'll start at the top. Everything's looking good here. This branch is getting a little uh, fluffy looking. This branch is going the wrong direction here, kind of back in towards the tree. So I'll prune those off. The one sticking up I'll prune off. Like that, that helps. And there's a part here that's not very radial. I'll take that off also. And some of the branches very close to the trunk I'll prune away. If I can get in there. There. <laughs> okay. This is so hard to see. I need like magnifying lens on to prune these. They're so fine. There's a bit of vertical growth coming off. The rest is looking good. Here's some vertical growth that can come off. Right here on this branch, it has a lot of vertical growth. So I'm taking that off. I don't think I'd want to get any smaller tree than this one. This is about the limit for me. Here's another bit of vertical growth I can take off to kind of keep my cascading branches. Like that. Now you can see this is just sort of a clump. You can't see any branch separation, so I need to keep them separated. So I need to clean out some of this interior growth here to get my branches a little more space around them. Yeah, this one can come right out here. It's a hanging part there. That's a big improvement. Give some space in here. Now there's something going on with this branch. That's not bad. Take this vertical part off here, and the tip off, if I can get in here, <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so small, there, there, that, that, that looks better, okay, now down here there's a clump of branches, doesn't need to be there. There, I got rid of that. Like that. And then I'm looking. So this is growing upwards from this lower branch, so I need to get rid of that. So here I go. Hopefully the tree will look okay after I do this. There. I got rid of that upwards growth. So this branch is kind of cascading now. I think I've got to get rid of this little branch in here. It's kind of between two branches and it's cluttering up my space. So this is looking much better from the back now. Now I've got to go lower. Um, So here's a case where I have a one branch above another. I can prune off some of the vertical growth on this branch. Like that. And I think that's got to stay like that. This can come off on the interior here. Cleaning that interior out a bit so you can see the trunk line a bit more. This branch has some vertical growth I can take off. 
Same with this branch. Like that. And this branch is very dense and fluffy. So I need to remove some of this vertical growth on it. Like that, and I think I need to prune the tip back. It's getting a little long. And then some of this branching on the interior here I can clean out a bit just to give me a little more negative space. That's looking good. Maybe some some of these branches back here can come off. Yeah. Lots of negative space now. You can see the trunk line. This is the back of the tree still. Maybe a little more off this branch there. And prune the tip off this one. It's getting a little long there. I think that's it for the back. Let's have a look from the front of the tree now. Here is a look at the tree from the front now. Yeah, I, I really like it. It has that mature conical form, a bit of asymmetry. This is longer than this side because these are kind of growing from the inside of the curve here. Yeah, I, I think that's looks good. I'm uh, very pleased with the little tree. It's not a large tree. <laughs> it's the sort of the span of my hand high. So that's the last of my uh, little super miniatures in the sand tray. All of the trees in the sand tray here are fairly young trees. I've only been working on them since spring. But they all have the potential to become super old miniature trees. You can keep the height controlled and the shape and I think they'll become very nice small trees in the future. I'm, uh, I really enjoy working on these little miniature trees. They're a lot of fun, like even a seedling from this year can eventually look quite nice in just, you know, one season. I'm in the woods here searching for asymmetrical conifer trees. Hopefully I'll find a good example to show you. I'll keep searching, looking everywhere. Here's a Colorado blue spruce. Now it's not very asymmetrical, but it has some. You can see up here, it's fuller on this side, less dense on this side. It's not a real good example, but it is an example of some asymmetry in a conical form of a tree. Yeah, maybe it's just asymmetrical in parts. I was to draw a line. Yeah, interesting. The search will continue. I've got to find asymmetry in a conical shaped tree somewhere. I know I've seen it, I just can't remember what tree I saw. This giant spruce here has some asymmetry to it. It's not really, really noticeable, but it's there. I'm still searching for asymmetry. I may have to give up for today. The sun is setting, but I will find one to show you eventually. I know I've seen one. You just have to find the tree. Beautiful spruce there. There's an example at the apex of this tree here, right here, of asymmetry, but it's kind of cheating because there's a tree beside it that's, it's not growing on this side probably because lack of light, but it's a good example of the style the branches on this side, the right side, kind of reach out. The branches on the other side are more compact. Maybe that's the best example I can show you today. So there it is, an asymmetrical apex to the tree. This tree here is a spruce, and on the one side it's fuller on the left-hand side here, and on the right-hand side 
where's my finger right here it's sparser so maybe that's another idea for asymmetry is to have the tree fuller on one side and the branches more sparsely placed on the other side just to break up that conical form into something more interesting I'm always talking about the direction of the branches here's a good example all the lower branches on this tree are weeping as you get higher in the tree they become horizontal and then as you go up to the tip of the tree they reach upward they become more vertical so this is a good example of my styling and intent on a lot of my trees that kind of branch structure you can see by my shadow that the Sun is getting lower it's time to head home I never thought I would like growing these super miniature bonsai I thought yeah they'll dry out too quickly uh, you put all the work in them and then they dry out and they die and I thought ah, it's easier to grow a, a small to medium or a larger tree but since I've been growing these in spring it's changed my mind putting them in in this bed of sand I can go away for the whole day and they stay hydrated they don't dry out I find them just as enjoyable as any other bonsai I have in my collection and I'm really looking forward to working on them in the future trying to get them to look better and better as the years go by I hope you give it a try too they're they're really really fun and they don't take up much space that is all for today I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.